Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson, we are going to be learning about depth of field. Depth of field basically is the range of acceptable sharpness within a photo that will appear in focus or in simpler terms, the parts of the image that are in focus. If the areas of focus are very small in the image, we have a shallow or a narrow depth of field. You can see it in this image in which the camera's target is on the clock. Only the clock is, on, is in focus and we get as we get closer from the clock to the camera or from the clock to what's behind it, the image gets more and more out of focus and blurrier. And this gradual change from focus to out of focus areas happens very fast here. We say we have a shallow or a narrow depth of field. On the other hand, like our next image here, if the areas of focus are very large in the image, we have a wide or a deep depth of field. In this image, you can clearly see a large area is in focus compared to our previous render. Now let's see where we can enable depth of field in the Corona camera and what factors control the depth of field in the render. So let's select the Corona camera 01. And as you can see from the top view, the camera's target is on the clock. In order to enable depth of field, you need to go to the DOF and motion blur section of the Corona camera. And here you can enable depth of field. If disabled, the entire scene, the entire image will be sharp and in focus. So let's enable it for now. Right now, the exposure mode is set to global exposure. So changing the f-stop number or aperture size wouldn't affect the exposure. The deciding factor on how narrow or wide the depth of field is, is the aperture size, which is being controlled by the f-stop number. In the first lesson of this section, we learned that smaller f numbers means larger aperture size and larger f number means smaller aperture size. Now we need to add another concept here. The smaller the F number means larger aperture size and also narrower depth of field. And on the other hand, larger F number means smaller aperture size and wider depth of field. Just to simplify this again, the smaller and lower your F number, the narrower or shallower the depth of field and the larger and higher your F number, the wider or deeper the depth of field. Now let's try a few different F numbers or F stop numbers. Let's set the F number to 1.4. Now we get a very, very shallow depth of field. Let's set the F stop to 2. Still very shallow, but wider depth of field compared to our previous render. Let's try four. Still shallow, but again, wider. Let's try eight. And finally, 16. When set to 16, you can see we have a quite a wide depth of field and most of the scene is in focus. So again, the smaller and lower your F number, the narrower or shallower the depth of field and the larger and higher your F number, the wider or deeper the depth of field. For now, let's set the F number to two. The next thing you probably want to know is how to change the focus distance. Right now, the focus distance is based on the camera's target and right now the target is on the clock. So if I want to make sure the books are in focus, all I have to do is to make sure the target is on the books. So let's do that in the top view. You can just work with the target distance and probably something like 135 centimeters. 
will be just fine. In the depth of field options of the Corona camera, if we don't want to use the camera's target distance as the focus distance, we can simply enable this override focus and using this value define our own focus distance. Or we can simply enable the object mode and click on this none button and now pick any object that we want to be in focus. So let's enable it and select this bottle or we can select the clock but in this case let's select the bottle to be our focus distance now if we run the interactive render now the clock is out of focus and the bottle and the box come into focus another factor in how narrow or wide the depth of field is is going to be focal length and the rule here is the longer the focal length the shallower the depth of field. It's not as important as the F number, but it still contributes. Another important factor again in depth of field is the scene scale. And this is very important. Basically, the smaller your scene and your objects, the shallower the depth of field and vice versa. For example, if I have a scene that is 10 times smaller than this current scene, uh, the depth of field is going to be much, much shallower compared to what we get right now. For now, let's change this focus object to this clock geometry. In the material editor, this um, Corona color correct node has been assigned as the environment map. Let me connect this second HDRI to a new Corona color, color correct map and decrease its saturation to 0.3. And now connect the map to the main color correct map and run the interactive render. I'm going to set the exposure to about one and highlight compression to one as well. Now let's go to the bokeh rollout and see what other options we have. Bokeh, if technically defined, is the quality of out of focus or blurry parts of the image or simply the pattern exhibited in areas of the image that are out of focus. You can see these options are grayed out because like exposure and post-processing and tone mapping controls, you can control them globally in your render settings or you can control them per camera by enabling the override option. So let's do that here. In the bokeh rollouts, first we have aperture shape, whether circular or bladed. When parts of a photo are very much out of focus, the blurred highlights in the photo tend to take on the shape of the lens aperture. Right now, the aperture shape is set to circular, so the out of focus highlights will have a circular shape. First, let me just draw a region around these highlights in the background. Now, if I select bladed and set the blades to three, we're going to have a triangular aperture, which result in a triangular out of focus highlights. Instead of using only circular or bladed type, you can uh, set it to custom and define your own bokeh pattern. If we want to get the same result as the circular type by using the custom texture mode, for example, we would have used a white circle that fills a black background. So you can create your own shapes on a black background and use it here as a bokeh texture. Now let's try a few aperture shape. If set to circular, we get a circular out of focus highlights. If set to bladed and blades number was set to three, we get this triangular out of focus highlights. Set it to four. And we have a rectangular out of focus highlights. Let's try five and we get this pentagon shaped highlights. Let's uh, set it back to three, four now. And we have this rotation value, which allows us to rotate the aperture and therefore rotate the out of focus highlights. Let's try 25 degrees. And as you can see, we have rotated the out of focus highlights. Next, we have the center bias. This parameter bias is the transparency of the aperture towards the center with negative values or the edge with positive values. Positive values like two or 
five, which is the maximum amount, increase the amount of blurring in out of focus areas and create this beautiful ring effect in the highlights that you might have seen in uh, photos with very shallow depth of field. While negative values like uh, negative two or negative five decrease the blur and makes the depth of field to be quite wider. I'm gonna set center bias to zero for now. Next we have vignetting and this parameter vignettes the frame by simulating the cat's eye effect that some wide angle lenses can generate. Let's try zero, one, two, and three. Negative values for optical vignetting would produce the same result as these positive values. Next we have an isotropy or anamorphic lens section. Here you can simulate an anamorphic lens by stretching the aperture vertically with negative values or horizontally with positive values and therefore stretch your out of focus highlights. Let's set the anisotropy to negative 0.75. The effect is a bit exaggerated here, but you can use smaller values to get more realistic anamorphic effects. As you can see, the bokeh is vertically stretched. Let's try 0 0.75, which stretches the bokeh in a horizontal direction. Let's set the anisotropy to zero for now. We can also produce depth of field as a post effect using the Z depth render elements, but we will discuss that in its specific lesson later on in the course. For the final render, let's in the material editor connect our first HDR image again. And run the interactive render. I'm gonna set the exposure back to zero and highlight compression back to 1.8. In the render setup window, let's make sure the noising is enabled. And um, I think I'm gonna set my pass limit to something like 64, or you can just uh, make sure there is no limit and just start the render. And whenever you are satisfied with the quality and cleanness of the image, just stop the render. But I think something like 64 passes uh, would be enough, even though it's a very shallow depth of field, so we can actually go for uh, more passes but in this case I'm gonna try 64 passes and if uh, I thought that we need actually more passes to get a cleaner render we can actually resume the render from that point. Now we can start the final render but I'm just gonna show you the final render with about 64 passes and here is our render. So that's about depth of field in uh, Corona See you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.